So I wanted to do a video on what I think is one of the uh, very welcome additions to Rhino in version 7, and that's refit trim. Uh, this is something that a lot of people have asked for for a long time. Uh, there's now a tool, and as you can see from the, the title of the video, I think it's good. I don't think it's great. I don't think it's bad. I think it's good. <laughs> so refit trim, what is it? Why do we care? Well, in a lot of the videos that I've done in the past, we've split things along an ISO curve, right? So if I do a, an object split, I can, I can go anywhere like this, or I can go anywhere this direction, and I can split this, and the edge that I end up with is a natural edge, which is to say it's, it's not really dense, right? So if I dupe this edge and I just turn the points on, right? It's the same degree, which in this case is just degree two in both directions. It's always gonna be the same degree as, as the underlying surface when you split by isocurve. It's always highly, highly advantageous to split by isocurve. The problem is you can't always do it. There's a lot of times where you just don't want to split by isocurve, where the shape doesn't allow it, and and then you end up with a trimmed edge, right? So if I just do a line here, just kind of cutting across at an angle, and I extrude this up, and I split this with that, now, when I dupe this edge here, because I'm using a split, and I turn it on, right, all of a sudden we have way more points than before. Now, and this is a really clean, simple surface. So, when people make things with, like, network surf or that creates really dense topology, this just gets worse and worse and worse. So, refit trim, the idea is that we can now take arbitrary surface splits and we can re basically redefine a surface that has a clean untrimmed edge right so what does that what does that mean in practice so if i untrim this here uh, actually let's keep that so let's keep this split object here so if instead of splitting by isocurve, I want to split by some arbitrary angle here. Maybe this is my, my new surface boundary where I want it to be. I can split this with this. And then I'm going to use the refit trim tool. And it just says, show me a, sur a surface edge that's been trimmed. I can do this. Now, what you might notice straight away is that we've got a gap here, right? This has kept the same degree and point count as what we started with, but it's not even positional anymore. So it's pretty problematic, right? This is sort of not really what we want. So let's undo this. Uh, redo the redo the split. Aha, funny. Right. So what I've found playing around with this tool is that oftentimes it simply helps to bump up the degree of the surface that you're using refit trim on. Right. So let's say this is my new boundary. Right. If I change degree on this from degree two to five by five, say, I haven't changed my shape one bit, not one single bit. But now when I use refit trim, it's much, much better. Right, so I, I certainly just at first glance, I no longer have this positional problem. Or if it is, it's not nearly as noticeable as it was before. And what you can see here, this is pretty cool. It's done exactly what we've asked of it. 
right? So we now have this, this edge that is along this arbitrary split, and we've created a whole new surface based on that trimmed surface and that edge, right? Now, let's see, using edge continuity, whether or not we've managed, right, how close we are. Well, wow, like our curvature is really quite good. Let's see our tangency here. Our tangency is good too, right? And if we wanted to, we could always just do some matching on this. You know, I'm just going to do match surf, and I'm going to say tangency. This is a trimmed edge now, right? So we're matching to a trimmed edge, so it's matched by closest points and preserve isocurve direction. All right, we're still at one one hundredth of a degree. So uh, I don't think we need to take it much farther beyond that. <laughs> um, but this is th the basics of using it, which is to say, you know, there's there's no way when you're running refit trim to get a sense of how much your surface is changing, and that is that is honestly like the big disappointment here. Other versions, you know, say VSR of refit trim, they have a surface split tool that does very much the same thing. And in that tool, as you're in the command, it's telling you how much you're deviating from your original surface and from your split curve. And then it's giving you the option to up the degree if you want to have it more closely adhere. Now, VSR is no longer sold. You can't buy VSR. You can buy Rhino. So the thing to realize here is, you know, if you're using refit trim and you're not getting the desired result, it's moving too much. You're noticing these big changes. Just immediately go back and up the degree of the surface that you're running it on and then rerun refit trim. And you should get something that's much, much closer, really quite nice. Right? I'm, I'm pretty stoked on this tool. I think it's very good, maybe, maybe very good from good, it's good. <laughs> but th this is one of those things that's just been asked for for years and years and years. So let's be thankful that we have this. So another example of why you might wanna use this tool or why it's effective. If you watch the original primary surfacing series that I put out, I do a whole video where it's sort of you know fun with car hoods and scoops and feature lines and whatnot. And uh, somebody in the comments, very rightly so, said, "Well, hey, what do we do? You know, you're doing all this stuff that's split on isocurve. That's cool and all, but what do we do if if the shape that we want is not on an isocurve?" And at the time didn't really have a good answer for that, but now the good answer for that is refit trim, right? So going back to that same idea, you know, let's say for the sake of, of now that I want something that maybe follows this kind of curved line here for like a, 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 a scoop, like a down scoop actually, right? Something that follows this, you know, say it starts there but then we want it to go straight back, right? Because if I split this, you know, on the ISO curve, well, there's there's a curve to it. There's a there's a bow to it, and so instead, you know, if I just want to split it like this, yeah, I want to move it further out. That's not going to be pretty. All right, let's try something like that. Cool. So if I do something like this, let's split it like that. Oh, of course, it's being funny. Right, I need to move this down. And, oh, we should also shrink this first. So let's shrink this version of it. Great. And then let's split it. Because you really only, you only want to have one trimmed edge. That's why I just shrunk that surface. So everything should be untrimmed except for one edge when we're using refit trim. So this is our object to split. We're going to split it with this, right? Wonderful, cool. And, you know, you can see this is, you know, I made this, again, a very simple hood surface that was just degree two by degree two. And we split it along this arbitrary line here. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull my same trick, right? I'm going to 
in this case, I'm going to make it degree three across this way and degree five this way, just because I, I kind of suspect that's, that's going to be good, right? So I'll change degree here and my degree, my new U degree, which is these red ones, that's going to be five and my degree V will be two, will be three, sorry. Yep, that's exactly what that's done. And then I run refit trim on this right here. Awesome. And, you know, just visually speaking, you go, okay, we've, we've done pretty good here, right? And, and the output of our surface, right, is still, is now three by five with this straight, straight cut down it, right? We've gotten rid of that ISO curve bow. Uh, and then we can do all sorts of stuff, like just grab these and push them down, right? Make some sort of a an inlet if we want, right? All the stuff that we did in that earlier video, we can we can do it now with arbitrary splits instead of isocurve splits. So really, really nice tool, nice way to do it. And then again, on this stuff, you know, I grabbed everything back of here, so this should only be tangent, but let's make sure that it's tangent. So I'm gonna use my edge continuity test here, and it's still tangent. Yep, it's not gonna be curvature because I moved four rows, right? But it's still tangent, it's pretty great. So, and this is a thing again where, let me go backwards here. Right, so if I go back to just this two by two, and I do refit trim. So I've gone back to two by two instead of three by five for my degree. Right. We're gonna have a lot more of a of a of a movement here in terms of the edges. See these edges don't quite line up, right? We've got this bow to it still. It's not it's not quite quite enough. It's not quite good enough, uh, I would say. So on all this stuff now, right, we have this ability. Right? It helps to keep all of your primary surfaces nice and simple. Like this is having a tool now like refit trim and understanding how it works. This is really the why for why you bother setting up your surfaces as single span and nice and clean. Because all of a sudden you've got all these different opportunities to move your surfaces around, to sculpt them, to change them, to match them, and, and to trim them, to redefine them, right? We're starting to get some really cool tool sets and some different workflows that frankly were not really available with Stock Rhino. You just gotta know, you gotta know how to set up your surfaces at first, right? How to make nice, clean primary surfaces. And then you just gotta know a couple little things about this refit trim tool, which is Heck, if you're not getting what you want, bump up the degree. Not too hard. So I think you should get by now how you can use refit trim to really uh, edit your primary surfaces and to, to redefine your surface edges with it, right? So that you can, you can cut something at an angle and still have that nice clean edge to match to. And then you're building off of that. So I wanted to show one more use case for refit trim. And this is where I get a little bit less excited because it frankly works a little bit less well. Like I, I wish it worked better, but it's, it's worth thinking about and putting this idea in your toolbox. Um, and so on something like a ball corner like this, right? Uh, you know, after I've done the first trim down of everything, I end up with this and I end up with this three sided thing. And of course we know by now from previous videos, you know, we want to basically move this, right? We want to move this edge over here and this edge over here. So we turn this three sided problem into a four sided problem. So one thing that I used the VSR trim, refit trim, their version of it on a lot, is in redefining these these blends, right? Because you know, if I was just to here, let me let me create the trim that I would want. And so in this case, you know, I create I extended off of this surface edge here, just a straight line. And if I project it onto here, it gives me a nice 
a nice landing point, a nice target of something that will look really natural when I trim this. Right, so if I split this surface now with this, you know, this gives me the edge that I want here. The problem being, of course, that this edge is really quite quite dirty, right? And there's no need for it. Right, so we've got all these points, and then when I create this blend here, if I do the same thing here, all of a sudden we have way more point density for this blend than we'd want, and we can no longer you know, oftentimes we can no longer really sculpt that, right? So a really great use for these refit trim tools is in quickly uh, re, uh, redoing this surface edge, right? Instead of point editing it or doing any sort of thing like that, right? We can use refit trim on this edge right here. But what you can see, and this is where I'm like, Meh, okay, that's not great. You know, what you can see is that we didn't really match it that well. And so this is where I get a bit less excited. But, you know, this thing again, this is still a single span surface. We can sculpt and match. So let's match it, right? So if I just match this to here, oh, ha, huh, great. You know, if I just match this to this, uh, sure, let's do it by this curve, and we do it by closest points and position. But what I'd still want to do, right, is I, I would definitely still want to use match surf here. And on this edge here, I would not say by closest points, and I would say match the target ISO curve direction. And on this edge here, I would say by closest points, and I'd say preserve the isocurve direction. So this now gives us as close as, as we care about this nice trimmed edge, right? Well, actually, it's an, of course, it's an untrimmed edge, but it gives us the shape of the edge that we want. Um, but, you know, what you saw is that it didn't work that great. It works well enough to figure out pretty quickly some workarounds for it, but it frankly should work better than that. But I'd really encourage you to at least put that idea in your mind that that this is a way, you know, when we start creating these, you know, four-sided holes, what I found is everything is so easy, so much easier if three of them are untrimmed edges, or they're just edges that are split by isocurve. But when you start having multiple edges here that are trimmed, that's when your life starts getting more difficult and there's no need for it, right? So it's all about the setup here, making all this stuff nice and clean to start with. You know, so I, I carried that idea through to, to its conclusion here and I inserted more spans and rematched all this stuff and now all this stuff is tangent, right? And, and like I said, it's, you know, this is, you know, this is an untrimmed edge, this is an untrimmed edge, this is an untrimmed edge, and these would be fine if they were split by isocurve too, perfectly, perfectly fine, right? And then this is a trimmed edge. And so in doing these ball corners, by having three of the four edges be untrimmed, be, you know, what I would call a natural edge, it makes your life incredibly easier, so much easier to make a nice result. And you can think about this refit trim tool as a way of creating those blends that have the edges that you want or close enough to it that you can fix them, right? I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I hope you play around with refit trim. Um, I think it still has some, like you can see, I think it's got some little bugs in it. Um, I would really encourage you, if you find weird cases, you know, I think that this is one of those tools that will get more love and attention from McNeil if people simply post about it and say, hey, like, I'm trying to get to this. This seems like a reasonable thing. It's not working. Um, so I'd really, really encourage you to use it. And when you get an unexpected result, to post about that on the on the Rhino Discourse forum, um, I think that's that's really the key to getting these little things worked out, and having this go from a good tool in V7, I think, to what will hopefully be a great tool in V8. All 
All right. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks.